N4H and H here. I just chased uh, the famous WG0AT soda activator. And uh, just want to show you something here. There he is. Uh, look at there. No, no S meter reading. Um, but listen how clear. I've got him um, best with my doublet. That's 250 feet of wire fed with ladder line. Uh, coming in the shack, uh, you guys who've watched previous videos have seen this. There's the, you know, technically window line coming in. <clears throat> coming to the back of my uh, Alstar AT Auto. A little dark in here, sorry. I'm just kind of sitting here in the wee hours of the morning. Not wee hours, it's after 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, there we go. Now, so look back to the 891. Let me show you what I did. We'll turn off everything. There, he's coming up a little bit now. Well, you lose a little bit of S meter reading through your filters. Um, there we go. Many of you have probably seen my notch trick. Uh, so there's, there's everything without any help. I hope he's not finished. I want to uh, engage everything. There we go. All right, watch. So, width, 50 hertz. Digital noise reduction. Now I'm going to go into the uh, function menu here. And you'll see that I've got, there's notch. That's the manual notch filter. Engaging it at 510 hertz. It always defaults up here. I wish, I kind of wish it would default back to less setting. <clears throat> so you can tell there, I've got my pitch set at 550 hertz. So when that filter hits 550 hertz, it knocks it down. But look at this. So I put my manual notch filter, by the way, I went into the uh, the big menu or the, the main menu. Let me get out of the function menu here. So there we go, long press. So I went into this menu and I set my filter to be narrow by default. So, uh, so, the, so the notch filter is set to narrow. And uh, let me see, let me get back. So, you know, with the narrow notch filter, with a narrow notch filter, uh, the Chevy Chev curve or uh, skirts, um, you get a little bit of that ripple, as it's called, or some people call it a ring. So, if you've watched my other videos, I use the notch filter. There's a little bit of the ring. Hear it? I use the notch filter to knock that out. All right, then um, over to the uh, and, I, and I should point this out too, APF is on, audio peak filter. And the audio peak filter can also accentuate that ripple a little bit, make it ring a little more. But then again, the audio peak filter is great for, you know, incrementally dialing them in just in case they're, they're slightly off frequency. Uh, you can do, it operates, you see there in 10 hertz. Uh, increments so we'll see where he is best heard there's a couple of different ways to work with APF uh, and I should mention on this radio for 60 meters you have to use APF to fine-tune uh, another station because if you use the zero in function that uh, works like a spot and you move your VFO, your receive frequency, to, to get the offset you're looking for. It changes the transmit frequency of the radio. I mean, and if you deviate even one hertz from what's pre-programmed in here for the 60 meter channels, it will not transmit. You'll think your radio's died. Um, so you have to use APF to incrementally tune plus or minus to find a, a CW station on 60 meters that's a little off. Looks like I'm getting him best at plus 20. Now on other bands, like this band, you can also 
leave APF at zero, long press to get out of the function menu, and, <clears throat> and you can incrementally adjust until you find the, find the right frequency to give you your pitch. And I said the pitch is set here, and I've got mine on 550. Now you can use, the, when he comes back in strong enough, you can use the zero in. Until that blue light starts lighting the most. It doesn't track dits and daws. It just will light indicating that you have arrived at the receive frequency that'll give you the offset or the side tone that you want. You may have finished. While I wait, let me go back in here. So again, manual notch will help knock down that, that ripple or ringing that you get from a, from steep skirts. Um, you know, some filters have not so steep skirts, but then again, they don't filter as tightly. So it's always a trade-off. So uh, I'm knocking that ring down with the notch. Who'd have thought using a notch filter on CW? Listen, I ran across that by accident experimenting, thinking about, you know, how does the filter work? And <clears throat> If his signal was a little bit stronger there, I'd probably be getting the blue light. That sounds, let me see. Now, still just a little bit off using the spot there. If you assign the zero in to one of your ABC keys here, your, your quick keys, you can long press it and it'll act like a spot. But if you've got the uh, zero in LED enabled in the menu, I think it's menu 2-06, um, you can just look for that blue light to come on when they're sending. But anyway, just wanted you to see uh, opportunity here with the uh, FT891 showing off the filtering capabilities. I tell you, it's, it's a, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, it's a remarkable radio for something in the $600 range. You just can't, well, it's a remarkable radio, really, period. And by the way, sometimes in noising conditions, I don't necessarily do 550 hertz. Sometimes it actually helps pull them out. And I've got videos about this where, you know, maybe vary the pitch a little bit. You might hear them better in a noisy condition. Well, okay, I don't want the video to run too long. Just wanted you to... Oh, there he is. There we are. That's 550 hertz. I saw the blue light. If he were stronger, it would be lighting up a little more often. Uh, but uh, down at S0, and again, the filter width affects the S meter. So that's why you're seeing, uh, that's why you're seeing the S meter reading be a little lower. So he's really about an S3. Okay, hope you found that uh, informative. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.